All right, let's see. The gain is up a little bit in the right mark. Boom, boom, boom. Okay, hi. How are you? Thanks for stopping by. So, uh, I am doing a an actual podcast today. It's not just the Mind Scrambler show. So, so putting out there, hope we get some uh, fun new people showing up today. Uh, as always, it will be, uh, just a little bit. I'll hang out and chat with you guys for, you know, the usual about 15 minutes or so. I'm sure I'll say this again as more people pop in. Jake, what's up? Morning. And, uh, going to do a podcast today because I have already been on a podcast this morning. Uh, I've already had my podcast appearance. I was going to have two. One of them had to cancel on me, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so I just got off of, <sighs> Another podcast appearance, which was a lot of fun. Quinn, Kurt, what's up, y'all? Good to see you. So, yes, it's the dick. This is dick. In the box. <laughs> I will explain that more. But uh, we're going to talk about labeling and, uh, uh, yeah, labeling and limiting and pigeonholing, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so I've got some notes here, just a few notes. As you guys know, I don't usually, you know, use notes or really go off of anything. I'm just kind of winging it, but I write down a couple of things and then I'm like, okay, I got it. I know what I'm saying here. I gotcha. I gotcha. All right. Moving this over a little bit here. So I have my notes, sir. If I could chat with y'all. Emma, how are yous? Uh, I don't know why you're adding a link there, but uh, cool. So you guys talk amongst yourselves. Say hello. How are you? How are you? How are things? What's happening? What's up with y'all? So, yeah. I hope you guys are all good. There it is. There's my notes. All right. Uh, as you can see, it's a beautiful day on the Gold Coast. <laughs> Or at least it was when I took that picture. Uh, but uh, today it's still rainy as hell out there. Uh, it has been just rainy and rainy and rainy and rainy. And I got stuff to do. Um, yeah, I can't believe it's already noon and I feel like I've been going nonstop all morning. I mean, I just now got through some of my emails and did some audition Uh back and forth with you know burbank and hollywood etc going okay let's schedule this let's do that let's do this um and getting ready to uh do my uh appearance at uh supernova in a couple weeks very excited lil an older brother ben's birthday he recently became a father in january oh love it a baby girl named winona tell him uh, happy birthday and congratulations uh because we are going to have our baby in june looks like Kim says he's going to come early, a little bit early, not as uh, long. Declan took his own time. There's something called, in, in neurolinguistic programming, there's something called through time and in time. Uh, Declan is very through time. And through time means kind of like uh, party starts when he gets there. It's like uh, timing. We got to go right now. Cool. Okay. We got to go right now. Hey, I'm going to go do this thing right now. It's like, no, no, we have to go right now. Oh, okay. So it's it's that thing, you know, you all have friends who are in time and through time. I'm in time. I'm like on time. If, if, if we got to go somewhere and be there by five, I want to be there by five till five. Yeah, I want to be there. So super, supernova, it's SUPA, S-U-P-A-N-O-V-A. Let me, here, I'll give you guys a, a link so you can check it out. Uh, supernova, 2021, Gold Coast, what, what? Everybody, let me show you. There we go. And here you go, everybody. Booyah. Copy that. See if they got any new people in there. Oh, there we are. All right, here you go. Where am I? I'm over here. Here it is. Supernova. Bam. You'll see some of the people I'm going to be hanging out with. Good luck with three. O plus one O. What do you mean? Do you know something I don't? Because I, I know nothing about it. Except that uh, it like got a lot of great numbers in Japan. So it was like one of the top, top uh, releases ever. So I don't know anything about it, If in, about voicing. 
you know, or anything like that. So there's that. Thank you for the congratulations. I'm assuming that's for uh, Mom Bebe. Uh, oh, hoi, hoi, HK, how are you? Yeah, I know, I know what it is, uh, but I don't know what you're uh, wishing me good luck with. I guess you're wishing me good luck that I that I'm able to do it. I would like that very much, but we don't know. We shall see. We'll see what happens because I know it. It's I mean it's out, and I know people have been. Nobody's been like posting spoilers from what I know. I'm sure obviously there's got to be spoilers. So I know nothing. So that's it. Andy Platinum, what's up, yo? Good to see you. Thanks for stopping by, Andy Platinum. The name like that, man, dude. You got to perform, Andy Platinum. Very cool. I like that. Ah, oh, little. Mm. Just a slept funky. Good luck with the final Ava movie. Again, I don't. I think yeah, you're wishing me good luck to be able to record it. I guess. Okay, cool. I'm gonna go with that. Well, thank you. I hope I get it as well. We'll see. No idea. But uh, anyway, so yeah, here, uh, like I said, raining here on the Gold Coast. It's been rainy for like a freaking week. I love it. I think it's great. I would like to see some more sun because I like to get out and, you know, walk out and on the beach and things like that. Uh, Declan is in school today, so he's in pre kindy today and tomorrow. Yay. He loves it so much. And he has so much fun with that. Namesake, Star Platinum. You said words there. I have no idea what you're talking about. Um, but uh, yeah, so, ooh, a couple things. Let's see what else uh, I want to share with you guys. Uh, I found bacon. Yes. I found bacon in Australia. You guys know how hard I've been trying to find it. Um, are you tired or up and excited? What do I look like? So I'm up and excited. I've been having a great day. I've already, like I said, I've already been on a, uh, a podcast and it's audition. Uh, and I'm doing a podcast now with you guys here. So we'll be doing that in about seven minutes. And uh, we're going to have some fun with that. But so check this out. So, oh, it's a character from JoJo's. Gotcha. I'm in JoJo's. Uh, I played a psychotic doll again, you know, like you do. So there's a guy up in Noosa. So where I am is on the Gold Coast, and uh, I'm south of Brisbane. So if I got on a on the tram and the train, in about an hour and a half, I'd be in Brizzy, right? So then north of Brizzy is a place called the Sunshine Coast, and there's a town called Noosa, where apparently they've got some good restaurants because there's another guy who's a big um, forager, and he has a smoker. It's called Black Bunny, I think it is. And so he smokes stuff and i'm like okay we got smoked meat we got bacon i'm like i'm going to noosa we're gonna go up there for a weekend sometime because like this weekend we're going up for um uh up to tam tambourine mountain uh but and that's just gonna be a couple of days getaway so we can just be like <sighs> just relax and uh yeah, bacon and sausage burger nice i can go for that uh yesterday i had hot dogs for the first time in over a year, because I made chili, because I found, oh, I don't know if you guys told you this, I also located chili powder. Yes. Really? There is a, it's a chemist shop. They call it, when we call it pharmacy, they call it chemist. The chemist shop uh, has a big uh, organic whole food health area. It's like, you know, six, six little aisles. And on one of them, they got a lot of um, herbs. And spices, and I found I found chipotle, ancho chili, and Colorado chilies, whole Colorado chilies. And I bought two of those. I, I bought everything they had. I mean, like hey, you got chili powder. I will take all of it. Thank you very much. So when I go to Pack Fair today or tomorrow, I will be getting more if they have any more left. But they have great spices and whatnot. So uh, and oh, and found um um. Mushrooms, uh, porcini, porcini mushrooms, dried porcini mushrooms. Mm -hmm. Kind of hard to find sometimes, but uh, that was something that we always had in Italy. So it, the porcini mushrooms was in all of my soups and, and beans and stews or whatever it was, anything I was doing, uh, cacciatore, anything. 
and it just had a little mm, a little nice flavor to it. So that was good. Bit of bacon and jumbo breakfast roll. Dude, we went down to uh, a place called Bar Italia. That's where we go in the morning sometimes. And we sat and had a cappuccino this morning. And they have the biggest freaking um, croissants I've ever seen. And they turn those into a big ass breakfast sandwich. I don't know how you get your mouth around. I, uh, it's, it's that. It's huge. And I'm like, that looks nice. That really looks nice. I'm going to eat you. You know, that kind of thing. So, um, yeah, but I'm gluten-free, kind of, you know, for the most part. But yesterday with those hot dogs, I was not. I was not. I got me some really nice brioche hot dog rolls. Oh, soft, tasty. Man, I loaded those up with mustard and onions and chili and ah, just tore them up. You can see pictures of it on Twitter. Um, so that was really great. So I'm going to have some more of those probably today. Uh, la, 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 la. Of course, that was the rotisserie leg of lamb I had the other day too. Damn, y'all. That was that was yummy. That was so damn yummy. Um, anyway, so now you've seen the Supernova guest lineup. I get to hang out with some cool people, hopefully. That's going to be very nice. Um, you never know. I mean, like this last time, I... You know, I met Spike from Buffy and nice guy, so quiet, keeps to himself, never said two words to him. I was like, hey, how are you doing? So good. That's it. He just very, very keeps to himself. Um, and then uh, – and it was Holly Marie Combs from Charmed, and I watched every episode of Charmed. Loved Charmed, loved her, never said a word to her. I was like – She's busy. She's always on the phone doing stuff. She was going through some stuff, I guess. I don't know, but it was a shame. I would have loved to have uh, met. That's one of the parts I love about uh, doing Supernova and big conventions like that because you get to meet cool people and hopefully make some friends. And uh, I have over that time because like from um, The Walking Dead, uh, we made – we got to hang out with – uh, several of them and that was fun we had a great time and kind of not really keeping in touch with them because we didn't really get to bond all that much because the gold coast kind of was like shaky and you know everybody's like i gotta get out of here because uh they were gonna close down the borders and everything so people were kind of a little freaky but uh but we did have fun so there's that all right <laughs> got stuff all over my computer yeah i'm uh, gonna be piping Piping, piping, piping. I'm going to be starting this up here in just a couple of minutes. So hopefully you guys are hanging out and having a good time, getting situated, ready to listen. Mm. Hopefully what I'm talking about today will resonate with a few folks because uh, I've been seeing it a lot. And I've seen it in Hollywood. I've seen it in... Just so many different places, and we'll, we'll discuss that. Just, how's that? Is that better? It's okay. Got a little light here. You can see me. Yeah, we're looking good. So here I am on the beach, just running along in the beach with my face. Yeah, it's pretty cool. It is gorgeous, guys. This is the beach we walk almost every day, and we used to live right. Uh, there, right about there. There's a building, a couple buildings right there. Now we're like way over here. Different place. Finding out the meaning of that title. All right, then. It's Brett. Brett Weaver's here today. All right. Hey, buddy. Good to see you. Uh, oh, wait. It was an invisible bottle. Yeah. Holy. Oh, that's so cool. Hello. How are you? How's it going? Yeah. Of course, the glare looks a little like a penis. What's that? Uh, uh. Freaky deaky. Well, it works with uh, my title today. Okay. So we're going to get started uh, as usual. As you guys know, uh, I go for about 30 minutes on the podcast. Can't talk to anybody. Can't say anything. So if anybody pops in and goes, why isn't he talking to me? Just let him know. He's doing a podcast, dude. Chill. Shut it, man. Uh, oh, also, uh, by the way, real quick, uh, today, my interview with Orion Akaba uh, on um, 
my podcast came out, so it released. It's on iTunes. Pop on over. Let me give you – here's the, the link to the podcast, the actual podcast right here. So pop on over here and uh, check it out. So had a great uh, had a great discussion with with Orion. Lots of lots of mental stuff in there, and uh, he's great. He's just a super guy. We had a really good time. So check that out. Uh, pop on over there. And for those of you who don't know yet, uh, the re well, most of you guys already know, I've told you all about it. The Reluctant Heroes Journey is my membership group. Now, the membership group, I do coaching in there uh, a little bit, like a little bit a week and a month, et cetera. There, there's a lot of uh, a lot of stuff in there. One of the things I do inside that membership group is whenever I do an interview, I do it live inside the group. So if you're inside the group, the videos are always available for you. Uh, the interviews from Jennifer Hale to Mark Pellegrino to Orion, et cetera, uh, they're all ready to go and they're inside the group. Now, uh, I will be releasing Orion's. Uh, his is available on iTunes and I will be uh, making the YouTube, the actual video that will be going public soon as well. I just haven't had time, guys. I've been busy. I was, like I said, I was on a podcast today already. All right, let's get this... Uh, Let's get this party started, right? Here we go. Let's see. I don't need to open up Audacity because I'm going to pull the audio from this anyway. Make sure I got my mic and everything working here. Let's be 100%. Oh, of course not. There we go. That's better. Wow. How did I know I wasn't doing that? Okay, now you guys can hear me. Now my professional microphone is working. <laughs> oh, boy. So what have I voice acted for? Google me, Lamb Brandon. Are you kidding me? All right, here we go. We're starting the podcast right about... Wait, no, I actually, I do need to do the audacity. Sorry, guys. I do have to have it as a backup. It's just better quality. You know what I mean? I mean, I download the audios of other things, but not today. SSL. Yeah, it's good. It's good. Check on the uh, levels here. Okay, check it out. Blah, blah, blah. But you better go to boo. Bring my gain up a little bit. And bam, here we go. All right. Welcome, Lamb Brandon 3, by the way. Uh, I am about to do my podcast. So if you are new, I will be doing a podcast for about 30 minutes and then I'll come back. So I can't ask, answer any questions or anything while I'm doing my podcast. This is live, baby. That's right. Here we go. All right. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Mind Scrambler podcast. Uh, as always, I am your host, Captain Spike Spencer. Uh, folks, uh, we'll be sailing at a uh, altitude of uh, 35,000 uh, feet. And uh, uh, if you look to your left, uh, personal development. All right. That's my silliness for today. I'm sure there will be more. Okay, you must be wondering, what is with the title? This is Dick in the box. What does that mean? Well, today, uh, this is about how to stop labeling and limiting yourself and others. How to stop label labeling and limiting yourself and others. All right. Let's talk about labels. So from this is a prime thing I can tell you from my own journey in uh, acting. And let's say, so I go from Houston. I'm in Houston, Texas, and I've been acting. So I'm acting there for, what, 15 years or, or so, whatever. And as an actor in Houston, or in Texas in general, you do everything Anything that matters, uh, anything that comes to do with acting, you're doing industrial films for corporations, you're doing television commercials, you're doing radio commercials, you're maybe dubbing anime or doing some animation of some kind, you're doing IVR for phone companies, you're doing anything you can possibly do as an actor. You'll do public speaking gigs. You might even be, like I was, a children's performer at birthday parties for six years. Let me just say, as a side note, you have not lived until you've had your ass beat by 10 six-year-olds and you're in a Power Ranger costume. <laughs> no padding. Mm, that hurts. I still have PTSD from that. Anyway, um, so the point is, it's hard to put a label 
on that. So if somebody says, well, what do you do? Oh, I'm an actor. Well, that's pretty much, they go, oh, okay, cool. I get it. So you're doing all kinds of things. What have I seen you in? What have I heard you in? And he's like, oh, I did this TV show. You know, I did some of this here. I was in this movie here. And uh, you might have heard me on the radio or see me on the commercials, et cetera, et cetera. That is more indicative of most people's lives. Most people do a lot of different things, right? Now, when I went out to LA, I moved to LA in 2005 and I'm like, okay, well, I'm an actor. So let me get out there and, and show my stuff. And what am I going to do? And so I went to uh, casting director workshops and agency workshops. And it was interesting because everybody wants to really, really put you in a very small, limited box. What does that mean? So people are like, well, what do you do? I'm an actor. Everybody's eyes glazes over in LA when you tell them you're an actor because there's millions of them. And it's like, oh God, not one of those, not another actor. Okay. I get it now. I've been there a long time. I'm like, I understand the drill. So they want to get you down deeper. It's like, what do you do? Oh, well, um, I've acted in video games. Oh, you're a video game voice actor. Well, I, I have done that. Uh, I'm also, I'm on, I've been some movies. I did this movie and that movie. Oh, so you're, a, you're an on camera movie actor. Well, that there's that. And also uh, I did some anime. Oh, you're an anime guy. You, you see what I'm saying? People are trying to get you in these little bitty boxes, which is annoying as hell. And it was such a bizarre thing because it really takes away from who you really are. And it kind of hurts, you know, it's like, oh, you're an anime guy. And then people like, um, yeah, I don't want to represent you because you're an anime guy. I'm like, I'm not a freaking anime guy. I'm not a freaking voiceover only guy. I'm an actor or I do this. I do that. You know, it's like even like real estate, you know, what do you do? Uh, I buy and sell. Oh, you're a house flipper. You know, well, no, I'm not a house flipper. I'm an investor. I have buy and hold. Oh, you're a rental. You're a landlord guy. I'm like, ah, you know, I'm an investor. Okay. I'm an actor. Okay. I do a lot of different things. I also love to cook. I'm a foodie. Oh, you're a chef. Well, actually I am training to be a chef right now, but I don't want to be a chef at a restaurant. So you see how this works. People try to put you in these little boxes. Like this is Dick. What does Dick do? <laughs> Let's put him in this box. And when you put somebody in that box, you know what? It simplifies them. And you know what that is? Lazy on your part. So if somebody is trying to label somebody else, it really, really messes with the dynamic here. It takes somebody who is a complicated individual with many different talents, many different desires, many different things that they want to do with their life. They've got dreams. They've got goals. That's exciting. When you think about that, somebody is like, yeah, they are so powerful. They have all of these talents and they're, they're doing this. They're doing that. They're doing this other thing. That's interesting, right? When somebody goes to my website, they're like, well, what do you do? I'm like, well, I coach. And like, oh, what do you coach? Well, I talk about relationships, communication, and connection. Oh, mindset. <laughs> uh, there's a lot of things I teach. It's tr it's hard to get it, you know down into one thing because I use a lot of different things when I coach. It's like, oh, are you an NLP coach? Well, I am an NLP certified coach. I am. Uh, I'm also a bank code uh, personality sales trainer. I've also trained with so many other you know things, and I do you know dating and and relationship coaching. I can do all of these things, but somebody tries to put you in a box. When you're in that box, it simplifies you and it makes you smaller. So on your end, don't. Box other people. Don't try to label somebody and put them in your simplicity box. And don't do that to yourself either. We'll get back, we'll get to that in a minute. But for example, um, if I'm coaching, so I can coach in voiceover, I can coach in real estate, I can coach in relationships and dating and communication and business and all of that. 
So the through line for me is relationships. So somebody wants to put me in a box, they would say, oh, so you're a relationship coach. Kind of. But guess what? I also do voice acting. And they're like, wait a minute, you're a voice actor and a coach? I'm like, yeah. Oh, and I've, I've written three books. Wait a minute. You're an author. You're, you know, it's the thing where you start going over and over and over again. I am complicated. You are complicated. Everyone is complicated. Everyone has their dreams. Everyone has their goals. Everyone has something bigger than them. Now, of course, I know you all know somebody. Yeah. Cousin Earl, he don't do nothing. Okay. We're not talking about cousin Earl. Okay. <laughs> we're talking about most people. And the labels that we try to put on them. If you take away the labels, all right, now think about this for a second. If you see somebody on, let's say, the news and they're doing a certain thing, the news has projected that person in a certain way to give you a certain box. Look at if they're talking to somebody at the bottom line, like here, Spike Spencer, Mind Scrambler. What the hell was that? Well, that's the podcast you're listening to right now, my friends. But what does that mean? Well, nobody knows except that that's my pot, the name of my podcast. So if you look deeper, you'll find all of the things that go into the Mind Scrambler brand and the name and what all that means. But if you're looking at something on the television and they say, um, you know, the name of somebody, and then they have to put it in like three words, what this person does, <laughs> they go, innocent bystander. Is that what this person is? Is that who this person is? <laughs> this is their life's goal. Hi, I, I've worked all my life to become an innocent bystander. No, they've got all kinds of other things that they want to do and are. But when you're looking at this teeny tiny sliver through this TV lens, they've got to make it as simple as possible. Life is not that way. Understand? If you have been watching TV, if you watch the mass media, television, radio, any of that, it simplifies things so much that it's a problem because that pits people against each other. This Republican Party and Democrat Party or this sex against this sex. It's like it. it's so simple when if you take politics, which I don't do politics. I don't give a crap about politics anymore. Used to. Don't care at all. They're all the same thing to me. But think about it this way. When you can pit two people against each other, then you have a lot of power. You can manipulate, right? So it's like there's the left against the right. Left and right. Do you think inside these simple labels, left, right, that there are a billion different possibilities of gradations and variations on people, how they feel, what they're going to do with their lives, you know, how, the, what, how they really believe. There are so many different realms of that. Reams and reams of people thinking different ways on the left, on the right, doesn't matter. But you simplify, you label them. Now, why do you think we have all this division and derision uh, in the world? Labels. Labeling is so simplistic. Does it simplify things? Of course it does. It makes it easier to kind of pick your team, so to speak. If you're picking a team, though, you're labeling yourself. And how many times have you been labeled by somebody else? And you go, wait a minute, you just kind of belittled me, really, by saying I'm only this, but I'm this. I'm this. It's a way for other people to sometimes get a power play over you. We'll talk about that in a minute. So labels also equal judgment. So why are you labeling somebody? Well, because you want to figure out who they are. If you agree with them and you label them as something, great. Oh, one of us. He's a good fella. Hey, he's a good fella. All right. But if you don't agree with him, you can label them and, oh, it's the other team. Look at sports all the time. Look at sports. It's like our team against your team. I'm wearing red. I'm wearing blue. I have blue. Therefore, I hate you. I have red. Therefore, I hate you. I mean, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Everyone is different. 
I can root for a team and you can root for a team. Why would I label you as, oh, you're that fan? It's like, no, I mean, you could be a father and, and uh, running a business, or you could be a, a military man or woman. It doesn't matter. You could be anything. There are a billion different possibilities. So if you're labeling somebody else, you're simplifying them, making them smaller than they really are, and you're judging. Judgment is difficult because we make judgments every day. Every, every day. We make so many judgments. People say, oh, you shouldn't judge. Dude, you judge what to eat. You judge when to go to the bathroom. You judge every day. You discriminate every day. Once you make a choice, you've discriminated against every other choice. It doesn't matter. So why, if we're, we're discriminating, we're, we're judging every day, we have to be careful that we don't do that to ourselves, that we don't belittle ourselves by putting ourselves in a box. Oh, I'm only this. I'm only that. You're more than you know you can possibly be. I mean, I've done other podcasts about, you know, it, you are not just a spiritual being, you're, you're out there. It's, it's freaking universal. It's huge. There's so much power, so much power in you and me, et cetera. And our society has gotten to the point where people are making it as easy as possible to be quick. Okay, label that person. Done. That's it. That's the news. See you. Thanks. Good night. As always, as every podcast, I usually tell people this, stop watching the news. Turn off the TV. If you're going to watch something, absolutely do it without commercials. <laughs> and don't listen to the mass media anymore. You know, as one of our, uh, a coach from a, a real estate seminar uh, that a friend of mine who is on here right now uh, was at that seminar with me, if I remember correctly, many, many years ago. And the, uh, the coach that was up there talking, he said, look, I don't watch the news. If it gets bad enough, somebody's going to call me. And I've, I've thought about that uh, all the time. I'm like, you know what? That's true. Somebody's going to let you know. It's like, oh, did you hear about the, uh, no, I didn't. And usually that, that's the first thing I tell the people is like, oh, did you hear about the, no, what's going on? You know, and that's, I go back and listen to one of the podcasts I have on filters because uh, everything is filtered through so many different areas that it's nuts, which is very similar to the labeling aspect. Because if you can label somebody quickly, then you're filtering them out. You're filtering them through little holes that say, oh, well, this is what you're going to do. This is who you are. Like, I have a podcast. Oh, he's a podcaster. So what? I have a podcast. I also do voice work. I also coach. I also like real estate training and coaching. I also love to cook. I also love to travel the world. I'm a foodie. I'm a huge Monty Python fan. I love sci-fi. You see all the different things that, that I do. It's hard to put somebody in a box because they have so many various interests. Like when I'm coaching somebody, it's like, well, what do you really like to do? And a lot of times they'll say something and like, but you told me you're this. You told me you're this. This is your box that you put yourself in. Like, who are you? I'm an engineer. No, that's a job. That's what you do. Who are you? What do you want to do? What is it that really makes your heart light up? Oh, I, I love to, to kite sail or I love to trek in the desert or whatever that is. And it's like that is another aspect of who you are. You're not an engineer. You're a human being who has all these very different things. When you take the label away and start looking at people from the standpoint of how many amazing things they enjoy, how many amazing things they do, all the talents, et cetera, et cetera. Doesn't it get more interesting? I mean, this person, oh, that person's a lefty or that person's a righty or whatever that is. Well, that's so tiny. It's so, it's a pea pie. I mean, it's so nothing. I mean, you go, wait a minute, this person does this and this and this and this and this. Wow. They're really amazing. They're really amazing. Take away the labels. Get to this amazing point. Do you think you're going to find common ground? Easier. Of course you are. Somewhere in this big, big, big circle that somebody is. These, all these 
lines that shoot out all these little pieces of lightning that is like, oh, this is an interest. This is a hobby. This is where his heart goes. This is where everything is. Like, whoa, there's so much there. Think about all the stuff that's shooting out of you, all these interests and ideas and hopes and dreams and bam, somewhere in that infinite cosmos, you guys are going to connect. It's so much easier than saying, I don't like your team. Who gives a crap? But we can connect because we both love sailing. You know, it's like, I'll go sailing with you and, and we get to know each other. And it's like, dude, you become my best friend. We're going to sail in the British Virgin Islands or whatever. It opens up doors. Taking away the, the labels opens up doors. Because think about it, we are not what we do. If somebody says, labels you or you label yourself, you're lying to yourself. You're limiting yourself. Because when you put a label on yourself, you start to say, yeah, that, that's all I do. Yeah, but wouldn't you like to do this? Wouldn't you like to travel the world and eat great food? Yeah, but I'm only a dot, 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 fill in the blank. I'm only a sales clerk at, I don't know, wherever. Whatever you're currently doing is not who you are. If you're an adventurous soul and you want to get out and go see the world and you you have a, a, a vision board that has all these great places you want to go, that's where your heart lies. Those are those things shooting out. You've got all these lightnings shooting out from, oh, I want to go to Saigon. I want to go to Norway. I want to go to Bali. I want to go to all these places. Those are interests. Those are desires. Those are dreams. That's not what a little clerk who works at Kroger, that's all I do. That's who I am. No. You're the embodiment of all that amazing energy. You're so much bigger than you think you can be. Rip the labels off. You know, you can do this as a visualization. If you have a label, you think, um, you know, it's a self-esteem issue, number one. If you're labeling a per other people, you want to bring them down to a level so that you can have power over them, whether you're doing it consciously or subconsciously. You're labeling people so you can get one over them on them in a way. So that becomes that comes down to a self-esteem issue. I don't want to label people because I don't know who they are. So, but if you're labeling yourself, that's an issue that you need to get a, get grips on as fast as possible. And a way to do that is visualizing a, a label, an actual name tag on yourself. And if you think about, it's like, oh, well, I'm just this. You want to be more, but I'm just this. Well, then think about that label. Focus that label. Focus all your energy on that label. It says, you know, Spike Spencer, anime guy, whatever. Get it to where you are really, really feeling that emotion. Pipe all that emotion. Close your eyes and look at that label. It's all that emotion right there. It's like, that's who he is. That's who he is. No. Rip. Crumple it up and throw it down. You can stomp on it, set it on fire, shoot it to the moon. I don't care what you want to do. But rip that thing off because that is a limit. You rip a limit away, it opens up the doors. And that's what we're talking about here, opening up the doors. And that's why if Dick is in the box, somebody's got to open that lid and let Dick out. That's right. Free Dick. I know. This is my podcast. Hi, I'm a professional. This is what I do. <laughs> All right. So here's another way to stop labeling people and limiting them and yourself. You actually ask questions. Think about it. Be more, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, be more curious. Ask questions about somebody. Hey, what do you do? I'm an engineer. No, 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 no. That's your job. So what do you, what do, you do? What do you like to do? Like, well, I, you know, on the weekends, I, I like to go to uh, black and white movies. Cool. What's your favorite movie? You start talking. You start asking questions and find out. It's like, wow, this person has so much variation, so many dreams and hopes and ideas and creativities. You're going to find common, common ground. 
with anybody. You'll find common ground somewhere. And I've talked about this in another podcast. Uh, it's another way of doing this is also do the 40,000 foot level. All right. Think about anybody in the world that you might label as being completely opposite from you. Why are they doing what they do? Well, most people, including psychopathic murderers, they do things thinking they're doing the right thing. They're doing the good thing, the noble thing, the righteous thing. Backfires an awful lot, doesn't it? But if you think about somebody that you are like, I don't like that person. Well, why are they doing what they do? Well, I bet it's because they want the best for their family. They want the best for their country. They want the best for their community. And so do you over here. But this person is seemingly completely the opposite, a completely different label than you. So if you go up higher, you go, okay, well, maybe they're they're doing it for their family, their friends, their country, God, whatever it is. Maybe you both believe in God exactly the same way. And yet somewhere in the mix, you have gone a different way. But at the higher, higher echelons of whatever it is you're doing, whatever it is you're thinking, regardless of your label, maybe you both have the end in mind that is the same. Think about that for a second. Do you think that people in, in political circles, left or right, do you think they do what they do because they believe that what they're doing is going to help the country? Pick a country. I don't care. But whichever side. Do you think that's what they think? Of course that's what they think. I think that doing this is going to help the country. Well, I think doing this is going to help the country. Totally opposite. But what do they want? The best for the country. The best for their family. They just have different belief systems, etc. So that's a way to label each other. You're that, I'm this. But you don't know the intention. So if you ask questions, possibly find common ground, that means, wait, we both want the same thing. Really? I didn't know because you're a, and I'm a, see the point? Take the labels away. Ask the questions. Have a discussion. And I've said this many times in, in other podcasts as well. Always start by thinking, what if I'm wrong? Think about it. You may not be wrong. You may be completely 100% right. There may be universal truths that this is how it is no matter what. Okay, great. What if I'm wrong? Not saying you are. Just ask yourself, what if I'm wrong? Because that opens the door for the other person. And you go, okay, what if I'm wrong? I feel this way, and this is absolutely 100%. But if I'm wrong, maybe this person has a point. Let's ask. Let's ask that person. So what if I'm wrong? Maybe the things that you think are correct. Let me ask you, how do you come to that? How did you get to that? Rather than immediately labeling them as somebody and an enemy, you ask the questions. Get human again. Labels strip us of our humanity. And it sucks. It's cheap. It's easy. It's fast. We have to take a little more time, look a little deeper, and try to find a common ground. Because I know in the end, we all want the same thing, which is the best for our families, for our lives. So stop trying to label people. Stop trying to get one up on them and say, oh, this is who you are. That's who you are. No. Here's who I am. All this shit. <laughs> I do all this shit. I have all kinds of various ideas and dreams and desires and ways I can go. Did you know most people, I think it was uh, most people change their goal, not goal, their careers. Is it three or six times in their life? I've had several, and I concurrently have several because I may maybe I'll coach somebody, you know, tomorrow, or maybe I'll I'll do my podcast over here. Maybe I'll get some uh, advertisers to make me some money on my podcast. I've got a membership site over here. I've got voice acting over here. I've got food. Maybe I'll make a food product. I mean, there's so many different places and ways that I can go. It's the same thing with you. And sometimes that can get a little, <laughs> you know, it's like, damn, I got too many things going on and I'm not sure which way to go. But if you write it down, you can get some ideas. 
I'm, I'm reading a great book by uh, James Altucher right now called Skip the Line. And one of the things he talks about is writing down your ideas every day, 10 ideas every day. You start working that creativity muscle. So stop labeling yourself and start writing down ideas of what you can do, what you want to do. If there's 25 different things that you're interested in, write them all down. You've got time. you get got 24 hours a day, just like everybody else. And you want to see and learn and do as much as possible. Don't limit yourself by labeling yourself as only this, whatever it is. Oh, I'm this, so I got to stay in my lane. Screw the lane. Do what you want to do. Your success may lie in a totally different lane that you don't even know about yet, but your heart does. So if you stop labeling yourself, open those doors, kick the doors open, say, Dan, I'm going to do whatever the fuck I want. That's where you get free. That's where you get free. When people say, man, you just, you, I really don't know what you do. I say, I do all of it. I do all of it. Because that's who I am and that's what I want to do. And I got more on the way. You know why? Because I am a huge being, as are you. So I'm going to leave you guys with that today. No more labeling, no more limiting. And when you do find yourself labeling somebody else or yourself, oh, they're a, mm, stop. Stop. 40,000 foot. What do they want? What do you think they want? That person is that way because they want whatever it is. And it's probably the same thing you want on a different level. You know, the other sports team, they want their team to win. Well, I want my team to win. Oh, look at that. You both want your team to win. Why? Because it's great for your community and it's it's fun and it's it's a release and yada, 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 whatever it is. But no, that person's this. I'm that. Clash, clash, clash. That's why you have all these fights at freaking sports. Well, of course, the booze. <laughs> so the idea, though, take the labels away. Hey, they could be your best friend. You never know. You can be far more than you believe you can be if you just take that label and let Dick out of the box. Yeah, I went there. All right, guys, that's it. Thanks so much for listening to the Mind Scrambler podcast. I will see you on the next one as soon as humanly possible. Take care. And there you go. Danny, 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 where are you? Are you still here? I was just, I'm doing my podcast. I can't talk to anybody, so. Uh, Mojo, better unique and like different things than everyone liking the same thing and falling hurt. Of course. TV's full of mongering. Of course it is. It's terrible. Uh, Lay behalf. I am me. Great. There you go. Pretty uh, good. Do people find common ground with him? Yep. Labels. Yep. 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 Hi, C. Chai. C. Chai. Thank you, Emma, for letting them know I'm doing my podcast. <laughs> podcast is over, y'all. It is done. And uh, we're going to have some fun with that one. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions for me, please uh, hit me with them right now. That's what I do for my last 10 minutes as I ch chat with you guys. Uh, Emily! Yeah, you miss me live. That's okay. Uh, this one is it's on YouTube right now. I think it's going to go. Yeah, you can go watch it on YouTube uh, as soon as I finish it here. Uh, but it was, uh, I think it was a fun one. I kind of, you know me, I'm a little scatterbrained. I go wherever it goes. But you know what? It is exactly what needs to be said at exactly the right time for whoever it is who needs to get that message, whatever it is I'm talking about. And I know that. Thanks, Mojo. I appreciate that. Glad you guys liked it. I hope some of the things that I said made some sense to you. And I know some of you saw you in there and you realize you've limited yourself, you know, and you got to pull that apart. So do that exercise I was talking about with your, your name on the label and who it is you think you are that's limiting you. Rip that thing off. Set it on fire. Send it to the moon. Whatever you got to do. Um, and that will help you. Thanks, Jaden. I appreciate that. Um, yeah. Anyway, so that's something that I've been, I'm thinking about, uh, you know, when I, when I knock one of these out, it's like, I've just got something that is, you know, the download. I'm just like, yeah, got to talk about this today. Got to talk about this today. Get that out. Get that out. And, uh, that's what I did. So, yeah. It's like, I have, I have all these things that I write down. And like I said, you always have to write, write, write things down, write everything down, write everything down, write everything down. Uh, because you'll go back later on and you'll see something. And you'll, oh my God, I totally forgot about that. 
because you will forget about it, especially if it's at night. Oh, damn, dude. <laughs> right down the, you wake up in the middle of the night, what a great idea. I'll remember it. No, you won't. No, you won't. Write it down. And write it down as crystal clear as you can because you'll look at it the next morning. What the hell is that? So, look at the podcast. Thanks. I had no frustration uh, when people just try to generalize you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it, it can be quite belittling when somebody tries to label you. And I've had people tell me, I was like, it's so funny. Uh, I had an agent, uh, pass on me in Hollywood. Um, and she was like, yeah, I used to, you sound anime -y. And I'm like, oh, okay. So the, um, the demo I gave you was no anime whatsoever. These are all original animations that were actually produced. Nickelodeon. Peter Rabbit, things like that. There you go. And I'm like, no anime there. I, I don't know what you're talking about. It makes no sense. But they labeled right there. And then, of course, here's the weird shit. So then now I've seen several of the people who are in anime and they announce, I'm with this agency now. I'm like, you are anime. <laughs> I'm like, what? So anyway, yeah. It's, uh, it could be a pain in the ass. Uh, many people don't know how often the different places of acting overlap. I come each other. Maybe you said you do voice acting. They seem to exclude stage acting. Yeah. Where do you think I learned to use my voice? <laughs> That's right on stage. A lot of things in life. Forget a lot about it. Yep. Goku McDuck. What's up? Howdy. Good to see you. Thanks for stopping by. Uh, I'm going to be wrapping it up here in a few minutes. So if you guys have any more questions for me, let me know. Let me know. Let me know. Uh, that was a fun podcast. I enjoyed it. And uh, once I uh, end the broadcast, it will be on YouTube. So if you did not watch it, you can go back and check it out. Remember the uh, podcast on iTunes, the Mind Scrambler podcast, uh, my interview with Orion Akaba came, went live uh, this morning. So check that out. It was a great interview. And for those of you that are inside the Reluctant Heroes journey, you had access to it live uh, for the last like, two weeks. So it was already there. See, that's part of the cool thing about being in the Reluctant Heroes journey. That's another one of the perks that's in there besides coaching and community, et cetera, et cetera. And a lot of positivity, a lot of positivity that uh, we don't get enough of in our lives because you're watching the news. Stop it. Stop it. Don't make me come in there. I'll do it. Some of the funniest things I remember, there was a movie called... Um, Jekyll and Hyde together again, uh, cheese ball, goofy ass movie in the eighties. Uh, and it was a guy who was a really good physical, a comedian. And, uh, he, it was, I, there were so many uh, parts of it that are just brilliant, but he grabs a phone and he's pissed at somebody. And he said something, um, he said, do something, something or I'll crawl through these wires and eat your tonsils. I just thought that was funny shit. Anyway, that's my sense of humor. And this is the weird thing, you know, doing uh, coach, uh, doing coaching. And it's like, everybody thinks you have to be this kind of a coach. You've got to be, oh, you have to be, everything's wonderful. We're all great. I'm like, dude, I'm not that way. I'm a different kind of coach. I have my dark, sarcastic side, but I'm all about positivity. But if I find something funny, I'm going to say it. <laughs> I think it's funny. Uh, any advice for writer's block? Um, you know, I'm a writer, my wife's a writer, and you can't wait for uh, inspiration to hit. You have to have a habit of writing. If you're going to write something, you got to write every day, write every day, write every day, write every day. And I say this knowing full well, I don't do that. I do it from, it's like, I've got a book that I want. I'm like, oh, I'll do it. I'll write it, write, 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 write it. And then it's done. I'm like, cool. And then there's a whole lot that goes into it. Neil Strauss uh, has some really good coaching on that. You have to check him out. He wrote the game, uh, and I wrote for his blog for a little while there. And he's amazing. He's got many New York Times bestsellers, not just the game. Um, and actually, if you saw the the documentary, kind of documentary docu movie on uh, Motley Crue on Netflix, which is really good, by the way, uh, he wrote that because he lived it. He lived with them and and went with them, and uh, so he wrote that in a book, and then they made it into a movie. So. Very cool. But yeah, you have to keep writing through it because think about it. For example, um, like I talked about James Altucher's book, Skip the Line, and he says, write 10 ideas a day. He says, if you write 3,650 ideas, 
99% of them are going to be nothing. They're not going to do anything. But if you get one or two ideas that are just brilliant and you execute on them, you can be rich. Seriously. I mean, why not? And he gives examples of things that he's done. It's like, oh, I had this idea. So I made this company, built it up for three months and sold it for a million dollars or $10 million, stuff like that. It's like, okay, how do I do that? I want that. Yeah, let's go. So you come up with some ideas and you put them out there and you do it. All righty then. Well, I am going to let you guys go and uh, have some lunch and uh, hang out with my beautiful wifey. All right. Thanks so much for uh, hanging out on my podcast. I look forward to seeing you again. I will be back tomorrow, same time, uh, probably every day this week. I'll be able to do it because I don't have uh, culinary school on my Tuesday and Wednesdays until April 20th. So the next couple of weeks, I'll be here with you as much as I possibly can. Have a wonderful day. Go check out the Mind Scrambler podcast. I put a link up there. Scroll up, hit the link. Go check out my interview with Orion Akaba and all the other podcast episodes that I have. Snake Bake 24 from Mexico. Where are you? Because um, I'm from Houston, so very close to Mexico. And I've been to Mexico two, three times? Two, three times? I think two. Twice? I don't know. Anyway, uh, yeah, go check out the podcast uh, on iTunes and please give me five-star ratings, and write some wonderful reviews on the podcast. I could really use your help for that. All right, guys, take care. I will see you guys later on, ending the podcast in three.